All right, everybody. Hello and welcome to a brand new Pokemon Go PvP video. Today we are headed to the Open Master League with level 50 Tapu Koko. I cannot wait to get into these games. We also have that double legacy Mewtwo and that Groudon as well. These are some spicy Open Master League battles and it's the first upload of multiple uploads this week. So don't go anywhere. Make sure to hit that like button, subscribe and comment. You know the drill. Let's get into these games. All right, this is game number one. I just want to shout out to Adam Maskell for sending in these battles. I put a call out on Twitter for spicy Open Master League Pokemon and Tapu Koko answered the call. We do see that safe swap into Mewtwo and Adam was actually telling me about this before uh, we started the cast. He said he thought about Pokemon like Dialga, like Dragonite to kind of fill the safe swap role, but Mewtwo is so powerful, especially up energy. It's just so problematic for a lot of opponents teams. We do see the Melmetal swap in. I like this swap a lot because it keeps that Landorus away from Mewtwo, you kind of send this energy into the Melmetal and you keep that Landorus lined up against the Tapu Koko, but you have to maintain switch advantage to do that. We're going to see the second Shadow Ball get fired off here. Let's see if Melmetal decides to shield this one. That best buddy Mewtwo looking strong and he does not shield. Almost gets this cycle cut down. Here comes a Rock Slide and Adam actually going to no shield the Rock Slide. Mewtwo stands strong, does have a move banked. It goes straight for the Psy Strike here. This is a little bit unfortunate because the, the Dialga does come in here, but you still, you get off a charge attack. You you deal some meaningful chip damage and that is good i mean you want to land the shadow ball if you possibly can just because steel does resist that psychic typing coming here with the groudon having taken switch advantage but down a shield this is really good i like the over farm here by adam as well um the dragon breath is so tough to count in the open master league i mean there's no way around it it's very very tough to count those little puffs of dragon breath that come out i've actually considered making an instagram uh reel or a tiktok about how to count one turn fast attacks if you'd like to see that let me know down in the comments below if we get some comments going i think i'll consider launching that and getting that started we're gonna see the fire punch get fired into that excuse me into that landorus there switching in the tapu coco trying to catch a charge attack this could be a stone edge though and it's actually a superpower catching the superpower on the tapu coco great use of this pokemon because this is a pretty tough situation i mean you're dealing some neutral damage here but not a lot and stone edge just wallops it reaching for another move here but can't quite even get to the first attack because those mud shots are dealing that super effective damage go straight for the first fire punch you need two here because you need to break that shield and there it goes here comes the second fire punch you know it did superpower a few moments ago so I think this will be enough to KO. But now it's Groudon versus Dialga. He's going to go up for the Fire Punch here. Hopefully this is enough, but it's neutral damage. Remember, Dragon types do resist all of the elements. So, oh, not quite enough. And here comes Dialga with an Iron Head here to lock down this game. Tough game number one there. Going into game number two here, Guy with the dog is the opponent, Tapu Koko and a Garchomp, another very tough lead for this Pokemon because even though you're a fairy type, that ground typing is so tough for your electric uh, typing there on Tapu Koko. Going into the Metagross safe switch, so far this is feeling like a premier team, Garchomp and Metagross. Shadow Ball does come through, super effective damage. Now the question becomes, you, can you attempt a Psycho Cut down? Resisted Psycho Cuts, about eight bullet punches to go. Mewtwo can't do it. You gotta throw you gotta throw throwing right here i really love this move here uh, by Adam to throw the Psy Strike. It's secure the knockout here, and he does. Not very effective damage. Goes down a shield, but does take switch advantage back. Here comes the Dialga, and this pro this Pokemon is such a problem of shields for any team, right? But he does pull that first shield with the Shadow Ball, reaching right in for the Groudon as well, and he gets met by the Garchomp. I actually like this play a lot because it moves the pieces around. It allows you to put your Tapu Koko up against that Dialga later, which is, you know, better than Tapu Koko versus Garchomp. It does land that Earthquake as well. Really impressive impressive plays going for so many dragon tails opponent over farming a ton of energy going straight for the fire punch here and doesn't quite get the ko that feels so bad because now you have a decision to make I'm gonna let that outrage through i assume reach for the tapu coco here and try to get a bolt switch in He's going to wait down the switch timer, though, just in case he wants to reach for the Mewtwo. Coming in with the Mewtwo, actually, excuse me, going for the Side Strike. Oh, and he pulls the trigger here on the Side Strike. This could be meaningful damage. Maybe get a Protect Shield away. Does some damage. Coming in with the Tapu. The problem now is that Dialga already has a ton of energy, and then Iron Head is going to deal some really devastating damage if it does come through. Looking for the first charge attack, it will be the Iron Head. Tapu Koko needs a couple of moves here. 
and it does take quite a while to gather enough energy this pokemon is so cool to look at one of the coolest designs but uh man i just don't know how relevant it is we're gonna find out in this video we're gonna see the second iron head deal a lot of neutral damage gonna reach up for a thunderbolt and tapu coco gets there let's see if this same type attack bonus thunderbolt is enough diaga boom gets shocked not very effective but it was enough Game number three here, David leading Tapu Koko into Togekiss. Such a devastating charmer against Pokemon like that Giratina or the Garchomp, in particular the Garchomp. Reaching right for that shiny Dialga, 45-30 CP. Going in here with a Groudon, it going straight for the Earthquake, but it looks like a CMP tie. Dialga getting to the charge attack at the same time will be the Iron Head, but you gotta respect the damage because so much Dragon Breath damage is already coming through. I really do like that first Protect Shield there by David. Going straight for the Earthquake and it does KO in comes the Togekiss and this is really tough for Groudon right because you can throw these fire punches but Togekiss is going to come out with a ton of energy loaded if it does eventually secure the knockout but look at the bulk here of Groudon a little bit deceptive actually getting to another fire punch a little unfortunate there on the charm timing but you do get this charge attack off and unfortunately the mud shots are just not going to do it can Groudon get to one more and it can't that extra charm might have been the ticket there for the Togekiss to win the matchup down a shield again we find ourselves in a familiar situation but going with the Tapu Koko. Gonna no shield the Ancient Power here. Ancient Power buff does hurt a bit, but you have a move loaded coming in with a Mel Metal and you build to double Thunderbolt. Now, this is neutral damage, of course, but boom, it actually does about as much as, as a Shadow Ball, which is pretty impressive, I must say, for a Tapu Koko. Going for the rock slide here, does some chip damage. We've seen this situation play out before. You've got a stored uh, Thunderbolt in your type of Cocoa, I believe. So if you can just get these shields down, as we've seen the first one doing so much damage, maybe, maybe that Thunderbolt will secure the knockout. Coming here with a Psy Strike does pull away that first shield. You gotta respect the Shadow Ball going for another Psy Strike. Melmetal might be forced to shield anyway. And this is where knowledge of CMPs is really critical because if Melmetal builds a double rock slides here, Oh, actually, excuse me, Adam still has a shield. He still has a protect shield remaining, so here comes a rock slide. Took both of those shields away. Oh, he needs one more Volt Switch, and he does get it. Pulling the trigger on the Thunderbolt here. Tapu Coco shocking another Steel type, and down goes Melmetal. Jumping right into game number four here. Let's see what we have on the table. We have Tapu Koko lead into Zashi and Zashi one of the most OP Pokemon in the Open Master League and for good reason. I know during the uh, championship event it was in raids and I was able to get a Hundo Zashi in, which I'm super super excited about. Have been trying it a bit in my own Master League battles but it's still a bit tough to master. We do see the Wild Charge. In comes the Lugia and this is such a curious swap in because this Tapu Koko you're resisting the Sky Attacks. You're resisting the Dragon Tails and you're dealing super effective damage with your electric attacks. I honestly feel like Adam could have just Volt Switched all the way down here. Um, Lugia is incredibly bulky, but he does pull the shield as well. So let's see what happens. I mean, there's the off chance this is like a Hydro Pump Lugia, but I think it's very, very, very slim chance of that. Sky Attack resisted damage like we talked about. Pushing up here for an all oh, attending the Volt Switch down. He can survive a Sky Attack, but not an Aero Blast. And this is definitely a Sky Attack, but wants some additional HP, which I understand because you've got a ton of energy. You don't want to get sniped uh, by a fast attack, or maybe they come in with Metagross or something and just bullet punch you down. Coming in here with this Zashian, and it does go for that first Thunderbolt. Going for a second Thunderbolt, and Tapu Koko is absolutely carrying right now in this matchup. Really, really tough for his opponent's team. A lot of damage there. Switch is in to the Groudon to catch this wild charge I think and it is what a catch Groudon now paired up here against Eveltal this is a bit tough actually because Eveltal is going to be very problematic for the Mewtwo especially with double legacy attacks you don't have ice beam you don't have anything that you can hit with neutral and it does deal a lot of super effective damage with the Dark Pulse as such. We're going to see a second Fire Punch get fired off here. I think this is really just the pacing of Groudon at play. Uh, two Fire Punches actually get this Develto pretty low. And you finally get to fire up a Charge Attack. It will be the Dark Pulse. Not quite enough. Needs another Dark Pulse. And he does fire it off here. Excuse me, this is a bit interesting because you need, I think, maybe four more Snarls for another Dark Pulse. You can come in with the Tapu and deal some meaningful Volt Switch damage, or you can Mewtwo throw a Charge Attack. Coming in with the Tapu here. Look at these Volt Switches, though. Oh, my goodness. Getting a lot of damage. Here comes a Dark Pulse. This is resisted, but it's still probably going to be enough. 
and it is hit and comes the Mewtwo. You got to get to a side strike here really quick. Oh, opponent actually switches, switches in the Zashi, and what a catch there. Great catch by his opponent, knowing the side strike was coming. Evelto needs double Dark Pulse to KO the Mewtwo here, I think. Coming in with the first one, going to deal a ton of damage. Reaching for the next side strike, it does get there anyway, even though his opponent was able to catch. Adam still able to get to that side strike. Resisted damage is enough. Mewtwo wins it. Getting right into the next one here, Tapu Koko lead into the Garchomp. A little bit awkward for both of these Pokemon involved. Gonna reach right for the Mewtwo here. This is actually a Mudshot Garchomp as opposed to the Dragon Tail we saw earlier. Switching in with that shiny best buddy Lugia. What a flex here as we do see the Shadow Ball get fired off. And Lugia does not shield. Lugia has the highest stat product of any Pokemon in the Open Master League. So it can definitely tank that first attack no matter what. But the second Shadow Ball would be deadly. That first Sky Attack does get shielded. Going for the four Psycho Cuts in the throw. Great timing here by Adam. As he does get to the second Shadow Ball, going to pull away that shield. No, actually just KOs the Mewtwo coming in with the uh, Garchomp and goes right for the Psy Strike. I love this play because Garchomp had a lot of sword energy. You don't want to just miss out on a charge move. And it looks like he does get the Psy Strike off. Gonna deal some meaningful chip damage, but this Garchomp is still tough to deal with because now I assume you come in with the Groudon, which is a bit difficult as well because Fire Punch is resisted. And you might take a lot of damage here actually with the Outrage. Sorry, I was just thinking, oh my goodness, look at this. Switching in that Tapu and tanking that Outrage, resisted damage, in comes the Metagross. Dealing uh, some neutral damage there with the bullet punches, it looks like. Get, gonna build it to a Thunderbolt here as well. Metagross might attempt a full bullet punch down and shield. I think that might be the play here. Actually does not shield. Two shields in the bank, it doesn't use either of them. Get into the second Thunderbolt as well. Metagross has a ton of energy, but he needs to shield if he wants to keep it, and he does. Oh, switches in the ground on for the combo play. I'm loving these swap-ins by Adam here. Great, great plays. It uh, does pull that second protect shield. Metagross got a lot of energy. You gotta you gotta weigh your relative damage cost, right? Meteor Mash or uh potential earth power from the Garchomp. And he wants to shield the Meteor Mash. So looking for a mud shot down, but I, I suspect we get a switch here and we do not. Gonna reach for the Earthquake. One more mud shot and gets their crowd on. Gonna close this one out against its fellow ground type Garchomp. Great plays there by Adam. We've got three more battles to go. If you've enjoyed this Tapu Coco spotlight, let me know. You know who doesn't enjoy it though is Evelto. This has got to be one of the worst leads for this Pokemon, and he's staying in the matchup. In comes the Zashi, and gonna go for the Thunderbolt here. I like this play a lot because you don't have a lot of fast move pressure in the back. You do have this, the the uh, Psycho Cut with the Mewtwo and Mudshot with Groudon respectively. So you gotta kinda chip this Zashi and make it more man manageable, more palatable for your Mewtwo to be. That first play rough does come through. Gonna reach here for a Psy Strike. Great over farm there, I like that a lot. This is tough though because now the Evelto comes in against a weakened Mewtwo and you don't have a single attack that does uh, neutral damage. This is all resisted, right? Going for the Shadow Ball here. It's actually a good question if you should go for Shadow Ball or Psy Strike. Shadow Ball not very effective damage, gonna hope for another charge move and Evelto finally pulls the trigger and this is actually great because now the Evelto doesn't escape with a ton of energy right it already dumped enough for a dark pulse it can run hurricane though so I think Tapu needs to be a little bit careful even though that would be resisted coming in with the ho oh in the back double flyers and Tapu Coco wreaking havoc here I love the timing as well going for the Thunderbolt here four turn Volt Switch and five turn Incinerate are notoriously difficult to time and look at that a full Volt Switch comes through because the opponent decides to throw a charge attack it will be the Sacred Fire reaching for another Thunderbolt does pull the trigger here again four turn versus five turn you're able to throw the Volt Switch and the Thunderbolt before the Incinerate finishes do we see a catch here or a swap actually I think just gonna oh actually gonna keep it around opting for the Volt Switch down in comes the the Valto and Tapu almost, almost gets the sweep. But here comes the Dark Pulse here. Resisted damage, still more than enough as we've seen. But a healthy Groudon should be able to manage this. Going for the Fire Punch right away here. Might actually need to Mudshot down to KO, which would be wild. Actually, never mind. Does get the knockout with a Fire Punch. 
the Tapu Koko train keeps on rolling, heading into the next battle. We have another Evelto lead, which is so good for this Pokemon. Coming in with the Metagross here, right, going right for the Groudon. This is a tough matchup for the opponent, getting a little bit hard countered here, a little bit RPS, as we like to say. And we do see that Meteor Mash come through. Groudon still can only tank one of those. That deals a lot of damage. Going for the bait, anticipating the opponent wants to keep shield advantage here. Let's see what they decided to do. Excuse me. Yeah, sh a, a switch advantage. Excuse me. Going for the second Fire Punch here, Groudon really taking it to the limit here, uh, trying to deal some damage, and it does get the KO on the Metagross. Still four shields available for both trainers, coming in with the Evelta, one Mud Shot, and the Fire Punch. Great timing here by Adam, as he does, uh, in all likelihood, going to get Snarled down here. Does get to one more Fire Punch, though. Groudon, so impressive. Stay tuned for that second video, the Groudon Spotlight, because uh, Adam sent me so many battles that I have enough for a Groudon video and the Tapu Koko video. Coming in with the Tapu Koko and switching into the Excadrill. This is actually a bit tough because now the Excadrill is up by two Mud Shots in the Mirror Match, or excuse me, not the Mirror Match, excuse me, against the Mewtwo. What I meant to say, or what I was thinking, was that it's five Psycho Cuts to the Side Strike, five Mud Shots here for the Drill Run. So it's kind of a Mirror Match because you're getting to your moves at the same time. Going for the Side Strike there, and it was a CMP tie. Great job there throwing on the interval. Winning that CMP exchange, going up for another move here. You're going to build to the Shadow Ball, try to trigger another CMP, and gets it again. Great play here by Adam to trigger the second CMP. You don't want to let the Excadrill get even further ahead. I think we see the second shield here, probably. Actually, no shielding. Going to rely on the Tapu. This is so bizarre because this is a ground type Pokemon reaching for the Dazzling Gleam and goes for the Evelto swap in. And this is brutal as Evelto will get hammered by that Dazzling Gleam. Can Tapu gets another one, though? before the two drill runs are triggered going up for it oh and sneaks in the volt switch that is tremendous because it means you get this charge attack if you don't lose the cmp here and he does get it critical critical mistake by the opponent allowing a full volt switch through dazzling gleam takes out the excadrill this is the last battle of the video. We have the Ho-Oh lead. So many of these best buddy Pokemon in the Open Master League. So impressive. 4367 CP on that Ho-Oh. Going up here for a potential Thunderbolt, but wants that Ho-Oh to throw first. And look at that, just punishing this Pokemon with that four turn Volt Switch. A whole Volt Switch comes through. In comes the Dialga going straight for the Dazzling Gleam. Can Tapu Koko land this attack? And it does. A lot of neutral damage here. Coming in with the Groudon, but we're down a shield. And we did control switch though, going for the fire punch here. This is going to be interesting, right? Because the Dialga will get to the Iron Head here shortly. Uh, or it could actually go for a Draco Meteor if it wants to. You don't really want to shield in this situation, do you? Going for the Draco and does KO that Groudon. Interesting choice here to make. Do you come in with the Mewtwo? And you do. Going to try to farm up some energy, but still taking a lot of Dragon Breath damage. Oh my goodness, throwing at seven right there. It takes about eight Psycho Cuts, if my memory serves me correctly, to get to that Iron Head. So great timing there by Adam. Looking for that ho to come back in, I assume. We're going to see that third Pokemon, and it will be the Zacian. This is definitely so playable. Tapu Koko and Mewtwo both have proven themselves to be very neutral Pokemon, able to play against a variety of situations. And he does shield the Wild Charge, which is huge. Coming in with the ho well, I would have loved to see two Psycho Cuts there, but instead goes straight for the Psy Strike, reaching for the Tapu, and does get the Volt Switch down. Brutal play. Coming in here with the Thunderbolt and throws a single uh, Volt Switch and the Thunderbolt here against Zacian. Does not get the shield though. Still a shield for Zacian if they play their hand correctly. Maybe a double play rough could steal the deal. And here comes the first charge attack. This is getting really scary here for Adam. As a Oh, it's a wild charge. Oh my God, why would you wild charge? Unless you're wild charge close combat. That might be the only explanation. Having to shield that up and trying to farm down Oh, and he throws the move as well. I think you just have to commit to the farm down there. That's really tough because now you're double debuffed out of energy. Mewtwo is going to outpace you, and it does get into the side strike. Wow, just incredible, incredible plays. Some mistakes by the opponent, but also Adam playing very, very well. All right, everybody, I hope you enjoyed these Tapu Koko battles. One of the most rare level 50 Pokemon I've ever seen in the Open Master League. Shout out to Adam again for sending in these videos. If you want me to shoutcast your battles, make sure to check out the link down in the description below and stay tuned for more. Tons of uploads this week, so buckle in.